things that I have been dealing with for the past few weeks and there's some stuff that has been on my heart and on my mind uh, more now so than before uh, since Sunday after service. I believe that when I was on this platform leading worship I was having a spiritual battle uh, because most of the things that I remember are not about what happened here but more I felt like I was being moved to another place because I was sitting there and I'm pushing my foot down against the floor and I felt like I wanted to stand, okay come on, bring it, <laughs> bring it on, you know? <laughs> Um, yeah, I was talking to someone at work and I said, yeah, you know, I was just standing there and I'm playing the guitar and I'm singing a song and I'm saying the, this, this declaration of, uh, of faith and, and I feel like I was just standing in front of someone at heart, put the gloves on and let's go, you know, <laughs> she started laughing. Uh, but these things that have been in my mind lately, it's, it's regarding a, a decision that I feel I'm being led to make. <clears throat> so I am going to approach this by trusting God and knowing that He's the one that's guiding my steps. Mm -hmm. So the first scripture that I want to read is from Psalms 85, verse 8. I will hear what God the Lord will speak. Mm -hmm. For he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. I'm making a decision right now that I am going to hear what the Lord is trying to tell me. Amen. Uh, you know, I, when I pray, I, I ask him, Lord, show me what you want me to do, give me revelation. I know that you are going to have me do what you want. What you're going to show me, I'm going to do. Uh, that's why I know that everything is it's good. And when I was thinking about this, it brought me back to 2 Kings chapter 4, Shunammite woman. So I want to read verses 25 and 26. So she, so she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel, and it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. Mm -hmm. I'm making that declaration right now. Whatever decision I make, it is well. Amen. It shall be well. 
because I know that the Lord is taking care of me, is taking care of you, all of you, because he knows our hearts. And I want to finish with this last uh, scripture that I think puts the nail in the coffin. And this is Proverbs 30, verse 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Amen. So I'm making a declaration right now. I am putting my trust in him. Amen. Amen. So I know that the decision that I feel I'm being led to make, when I make it, it shall be well because I trust in him. Amen. Amen. So, that's all I have. Like they say, short but sweet. Amen. Right? Very rich. And with that, I open the floor for questions. <laughs> Anyone has anything they want to share, prayer request? Oh, before I forget, uh, there's a chance that my sister will come this summer. I believe she's going through something that she might be looking for answers. So when I make, well, if I end up doing what I'm being led to do, which most, most likely it'll happen, then she'll come and be with me probably the entire summer. Uh, so just pray, please, and, and, and stand with me that when she's here, the Lord will reveal to her what he's been trying to tell her for all this time, mm -hmm. that he uses me in whatever way he sees fit to minister to her. Mm -hmm. And uh, that when she comes with me here, that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that we've had and that I've experienced for the past two years since I've been coming to this church, she experiences too. Yes. Yeah. So that her life is transformed the way that mine has been. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. <clears throat> okay, and now. <laughs> yes, Mike. Um, Evelyn's uh, service will be in Carlisle at Peterson's funeral home at 2 30. Uh, you can Google it, it's right on School Street. Uh, South Fifth and School Street. So, if you're able to make it and support them and stuff, um, that would be appreciated. And naturally, we need to keep praying for the rest of the family. Amen. Tomorrow. Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Peterson's funeral home in Carlisle. Okay. Yeah, it's not going to be a conventional uh, service. I talked to some of the family. And I talked to Jason and Sunday. So. You know, it's not going to be a set down to what you can think of a funeral or a church. It's just going to be family get together. And I'm sure some people will share their thoughts and memories of Evelyn and how she touched their lives. But that type of thing is what it's going to be for anything else. That mm -hmm. was her request. Amen. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes, Steve. <clears throat> That kind of uh, your message tonight, kind of trusting God. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to trust Him. I'm worrying less about things. Um, I have to be out a week from tomorrow, so I will be left. There's no Freedom House open right at the time. I I really believe God wants me to go there. I believe He'll open the door when it, it's time. The nurse there that's on the board told my counselor that she doesn't want me to get an apartment. She wants me to get into Freedom House. Right. She's yeah. on the board. So I believe that that's going to happen. My only worries were, you know, just natural. Are they talking about a week? Are they talking about six weeks? Are they talking about six months? Right. It'd be better to know. Right. Lord will put me where he wants me, and then I truly believe he wants me at this place, and I believe that day will come. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Stand with you. Pastor, prayer for Sally. She battles flu symptoms. In Jesus' name. Yes, be healed. Be healed. All right, well, let's stand. Continue healing for Dan. He's.
better, but they keep putting on more medicine, so it's just that it's gone. Yes, it is. Yes. It is well. Yes, it is. Yes. All right, well, let's stand. Oh, Father, we thank you for bringing us together here in your presence today, Lord. Father, we thank you for the revelation that you give us through your Holy Spirit, for the word that you share with us, the word that is truth, that make us go out into this world and face whatever it is that's coming against us. Father, we trust in you, we put our trust in you, and we know that whatever it is that you're trying to reveal, it will be revealed in your time, Lord, and your glory will be manifested on this earth. Father, you will be done through us as it is being done in heaven, Lord. We thank you, Father. We lift those up that are in need of healing. We declare right now in your mighty name, Jesus, that the healing that you have declared, that your stripes have healed them, Lord. Father, we ask that you restore all of the relationships that are broken, that need mending. We declare that you will open doors for those that are in need for a door to be open for them to go through, for your glory to be revealed and manifested. Thank you, Father. We thank you for being so good. We thank you for your kindness. watching a uh, Pinterest board the other day that I came across and it was about inspirational quotes and one of the quotes that was in there really caught my eye because a lot of people when uh, should read it and, and kind of take it to heart and the quote said do not, do not ask God to guide your steps if you're not willing to move your feet <laughs> so yeah, my feet are not nailed to the ground, so lead the way and I'll walk. Hallelujah. All right, what do we have? All right. <laughs> all, all the leftovers are taken care of. <laughs> it was, especially the gumbo. <laughs> All right, well, let's speak the word. Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened, and I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the devour for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of the servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Uh, John, would you be so kind, please? Lord Jesus. 
and we praise you, God. Thank you. You're so worthy and you're great and great and we praise you. We come here tonight, Lord God, and worship you. Give, Lord God, all that you give to us, God, the strength and joy and the finances that we have, Lord, we give back to you. We bless and pray and bless this meeting tonight in our hearts, God.
Be lifted high, be lifted high, for your glory, be lifted high, be lifted high, be lifted high, lifted high. for your glory, be lifted high, be lifted high, be lifted high.
Thank you, Jesus. We bless you tonight, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Speak to each of our hearts tonight, Lord, as you already have in the worship, Lord. We sense your presence here, a very real and tangible presence. We thank you, Lord, for your multiplied blessings. Thank you for answering prayer, Lord, for directing our steps. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that will come throughout the remainder of this week as you continue to walk with us, open doors, give us understanding and revelation, direct our steps, and your blessings always be with us, Lord. And we thank you for it all in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Thanks, everybody that's here tonight. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm reading a, a great book right now. It's about anti-gravity. I just can't put it down. <laughs> Praise the Lord. James missed that or he'd have got me on the, the drum roll. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, often that's the way my jokes go. Oh, was that a joke? It's usually the way it goes. Praise the Lord. But God is good. Amen? All the time. Hallelujah. And I, I'm going to be brief tonight. Wednesday night I try to respect everybody's uh, midweek uh, challenges for work and all that stuff. So I'm going to uh, try to be brief, and I, I'm sure I will be. Praise the Lord. But I have a very simple message, and, uh, but I think it's pertinent for all of us. Amen. I know uh, rarely do I get the privilege or the luxury, maybe is a better way of saying it, of preaching something that doesn't apply to me, <laughs> praise the Lord, uh, that I haven't had the experience or soon would afterwards, praise the Lord. So I want to read to you from uh, the book of Mark uh, in chapter 1, and let's begin at verses 14 and 15. Mark chapter 1, uh, verse 14 and 15, and then we'll drop on down and read some more out of this uh, same chapter. Praise the Lord. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Everybody knows the gospel is good news. In fact, uh, you know, we always relate to it in terms of the Bible, but uh, when Caesar Augustus, I think it was Caesar Augustus, uh, one of the Caesars anyway, they wrote a biography of him, and the biography was entitled The Gospel of Caesar, whoever it was, I think it was Augustus. But, um, so that was a common terminology. Uh, of that day, but it meant, the, in this instance, it means the good news of the kingdom. That's what Jesus came preaching. So he, he came preaching the good news of the kingdom of God, saying it's, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Change your mind and believe the gospel. Believe this good news. Amen? All right, drop down to verse 17, and we'll read 17 through 20, Roberto. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little farther, thence he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. All right, let's go to Mark chapter 2 and verse 14. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom, and said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. Praise the Lord. So Jesus says that the kingdom of God is near. And uh, he says, repent and believe the good news. Amen? Amen? What is the good news 
of the kingdom of God. Well, if we went back to Genesis chapter 1 and 2, and we won't go back there for the sake of time tonight, but if we did, we'd see that we were created to live in a world where all relationships were whole, psychologically and socially perfect, because God was the king. Amen. He was in charge. Amen? But it isn't long before you get to Genesis 3, mm -hmm. and it tells the next part of our story. That we humans, each of us, choose to be our own king. Right. Yeah. Gone the way of self-centeredness. Yeah. Self-centeredness destroys. Right. It destroys relationships of every kind. Yes. Yes, Let's look at Mark chapter 10, verses 26 through 28. Every war, I could tell you, every war, every, every dysfunction in society and in individual lives is the result of self-centeredness, yeah. self-focus. They were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, who can be saved? Now, Jesus had just been talking about wealthy people, spiritual people, and all this, and the disciples are going, whoa, wait a minute, they're thinking what a lot of people think. Well, then... How in the world can anybody be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, saith, With men it is impossible. Human beings cannot save themselves. They can't do enough to get saved, no matter how good it is. But Jesus says, With men it's impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we've left all and have followed thee. <laughs> I just love Peter. Praise God. <laughs> Nothing makes you more miserable or less interesting than self-absorption. Yeah. How am I feeling? How am I doing? How are people treating me? Am I proving myself? Am I succeeding? Am I failing? Am I being treated fairly? Self-absorption leaves us static. It stops your momentum. Amen? There's nothing more disintegrating than the darkness of self-centeredness. Jesus came to give us light. He is the light of the world, which means he takes the focus off of us and puts it on him. Now, I understand what I'm saying because we all go through these things. That's, that's human nature. That's, that's because we are human even though we're born again. And the biggest battle, Roberto and I were just talking about this, the, one of the biggest weapons that the enemy uses is self-focus. Whether it's self-consciousness or self-centeredness or, you know, woe is me or how messed up everything is. And it's probably true in the natural. Why? Because the moment he gets you focused on you, we already know you can't save yourself. You can't deliver yourself from the mess. You, you just sink in deeper. You become static and stuck in the mud of mire of all of the mess that, that goes on in our lives. And most of them are the result of other people. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are they not? Relationships are difficult. Uh, the old cliche. It's not the ups and downs in life. It's the little jerks that mess everything up. Praise the Lord. So... <laughs> If we all have jerks in our lives, we all have ups and downs, but it's those sudden, you know, confrontational things that really mess things up. But when we decide to be our own center, our own king, everything falls apart. Physically, socially, spiritually, and psychologically. The big difference between religion and the gospel is this. Religion is advice on how you have to live to earn your way to God. Your job is to follow that advice to the best of your ability. And most Christians are still treating Christianity as advice instead of good news. Yeah. The gospel isn't advice. The good news is not advice. It's good news. Amen. The good news that you don't need to earn your way to God. 
Jesus has already done it for you. It's a gift. And you receive it by pure grace. The gospel isn't about choosing to follow advice. It's about being called to follow a king. But he say praise the Lord. Amen. It's not just someone with power and authority to tell you what needs to be done, but somebody with the power and authority to do what needs to be done and then offer it to you as a gift. Yeah. That, my friend, is good news. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Why? It's good news because I've been taken out of the equation. I cannot screw it up. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go back to Mark chapter 1 and look at verses 21 and 22. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority, and not as the scribes. Now Mark uses the word here, authority. In fact, he, he uses it several times in his Gospels. And it literally means, out of the original stuff. Mm. Praise the Lord. Now we were just singing a song, and we talked about Jesus, the author of our salvation. Well, this word authority comes from the same root word, author. So Jesus' listeners here sense that somehow he was explaining the story of their lives as the author of it. And it left them dumbfounded. It was like he was saying stuff that only the guy that wrote this could know it. You know, it's like I was talking about the other day. The only thing Hamlet knows about Shakespeare is what Hamlet wrote about Shakespeare. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Hamlet, or, uh, uh, Shakespeare is the author of the play Hamlet. Right. Well, Hamlet can't know anything about Shakespeare except what Shakespeare reveals yeah. in the writing. Right. And it's that way with God. Mm -hmm. God reveals himself to us in our story. In our history, he reveals his story. Yes. Amen? And so that's, what, that's what Jesus was doing here. And these people, they got it, but they didn't get it. You know, they knew something was going on here that is unlike anything we've ever experienced. This guy's teaching in a way as if he knows right. what's going on in my life. Like he's the one that wrote my life, right? So they, 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 they sense that, and it says they were... They were astounded, astonished, dumbfounded because he taught as one that had authorship. Not just as somebody who was a counselor or a whatever. Amen? All right. Mark chapter 1, verses 29 through 31. And forthwith, when they come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and Anon, or immediately, they told him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. So healing, what healing does, it shows Jesus is concerned with and is king over the physical world as well as the spiritual world. Praise the Lord. Sometimes when we're stuck in the middle of our physical world, we forget that he's in charge there too, not just in the spirit realm. Praise the Lord. He says, follow me because I'm the king. I'm the king that you've been looking for. Amen? Because I brought you news, not advice. I'm your true love. Hallelujah. I'm your true life. Mm -hmm. Follow me. Mm -hmm. Imagine sitting down with a five-year-old and you say, I'd like you to write me an essay, not in cursive, <laughs> on what you think it's like to fall in love and be married. A five-year-old. A five-year-old can't imagine what love and marriage will be like. It's beyond them. It's, it's, it's outside their realm of imagination even. Well, when we start to follow Jesus, 
we are at least that far away. We have no idea how far we're going to have to go, where this will all lead to. Amen? That's part of the adventure of following him. But anybody who says, well, I got it all figured out here, is either a fool or a liar. Right. Mm -hmm. Because when you're following, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know what they say about the, the lead dog uh, in a dog team? Right. He's the only one whose view ever changes. Right. <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. So where you're following, you're not necessarily seeing everything that's coming. Right. You're, you're just following, praise the Lord. So Jesus says, follow me. I'm going to take you on a journey. And we're on a journey, folks. Each and every one of us. Our journeys may be different. we got the same leader. We're following the same king. Amen? And he says, I'm going to take you on this journey, and I want you to keep trusting me. I want you to stick with me. I don't want you to turn back. I don't want you to give up. Turn to me in all of your disappointments, in all of the injustices, in all the uncertainties, because they're going to happen to you. I don't want you to turn to them or to the left or to the right. I want you to turn to me. Continue to follow me. Amen? Stay with him. Praise God. I'm going to take you places. This is the Lord speaking. He says, I'm going to take you places where you're going to think and probably say, where in the world are you taking me? Mm -hmm. Or why are you taking me there? Mm -hmm. And even then, he wants you to trust him. Yes. That's when real faith comes in. That's when God is glorified. Mm -hmm. When we don't have the answer, we just keep following. We just keep trusting when it, in all the natural, it looks like this is a dead end. It's just getting narrower and narrower, and I can see the light at the end of the tunnel, and there's a train coming down the track this direction. But I keep following because I'm trusting him. Injustices, disappointments, discouragements, uncertainties. Is that not what life is? These are the tribulations. These are the things that Jesus has overcome. Mm -hmm. That's why he says, just follow me. I know the way through. Just don't give up. Don't turn back. Don't, don't turn aside. Follow me. Amen? Amen? It's simple, but yet it's, it's profound. Jesus himself does absolutely everything that he calls us to do. When he called James and John, we read uh, earlier, when he called James and John to leave their father in the boat, think about it. Jesus had already left his father's throne. Later, he's going to be ripped from his father's presence on the cross. He's not asking them to do something. He's already done it. See, it may look like he's, he's taking you to a dead end. Places where you're going to be hurt. Where it looks like you'll be crushed. But don't try to go backward. His kingship will not crush you. It won't hurt you. He was crushed for you. Yes. He followed his path to the cross and death. So that you can follow yours into his arms of victory and everlasting life. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. I told you it'd be brief and I meant it. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it's simple, but it's so true. Everything works when we focus on Him. When we just follow Him. He didn't call us to a religion. It, this is a king calling us to follow Him in His kingdom. If you do that, surely everywhere you set your foot, will become yours. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. So, when you go out these doors,
try to forget about the dead ends that look like are ahead of you. The narrow paths that seem to be getting narrower and narrower. And stay focused on this almighty God. Amen. On the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And know that He's taking you right down the path that He's already blazed. Lord. He's not going to take you any place that's going to be harmful or hurtful to you. He's going to bless you no matter how negative it looks. Mm -hmm. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. Go to Him. Amen. 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 And you'll be successful. Lord. Because He's successful. Yes. You cannot fail. Amen? Amen. That makes us more than conquerors, by the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He knows what he's doing. Yes, he does. Amen. Trust him. Hallelujah. You're dismissed in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Come back here Sunday. Suzanne has got a great message lined up for you all. Come, on, Come and be blessed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs> Dean, may I give you a ride? Yes, thank you.